Hi, I'm Taya Williams. Thank you for joining me here on Taya's Sweet Aroma. For today's recipe, I decided that I wanted to share with you one of my favorite country style dishes. Um, this one reminds me so much of my grandmother and it is my bacon wrapped meatloaf. My grandma Vernell made meatloaf all the time and one of the things that I remember her stressing to me the most when I started getting into the kitchen and learning how to make some of my favorite childhood dishes was you want to make sure that you flavor that meatloaf before you bake it. Because once your meatloaf is baked, there's really no way to penetrate all those flavors into your meatloaf. So you wanna make sure you pack in the flavor before you bake it. Um, my grandma, when she would make her meatloaf, she used saltine crackers. And as I've played with this recipe over the years, I've started using other things than my grandma, although a lot of the things are very similar to her. One thing she used to use was some sausage, some breakfast sausage, breakfast, <laughs> okay some breakfast sausage she used to use all the time. Um, now, if you want to kick up the heat a little, they also sell hot breakfast sausage. You can use that as well. Or if you don't wanna use a breakfast sausage, you can use just plain ground pork. I like using the breakfast sausage because it just, to me, it just adds to the flavor of the meatloaf. And again, we're trying to pack in that flavor, all right? So something else that I started using was stuffing mix. Um, I actually don't remember what made me start using this. I'm guessing I may have been out of the saltine crackers and this was just hanging out in the pantry and so I used it. Ever since I used it, I have not gone back to the saltine crackers. And another thing that's different from my grandma's is I wrap mine in bacon. Again, more flavor, <laughs> more pork flavor, more salt flavor, smoky flavor. I also coat the top of the meatloaf in my homemade tangy barbecue sauce recipe, which I've already shared here for you on my, um, on my channel, but I'll be sure to include a link down below in the description box for not only this recipe, but also the recipe for that barbecue sauce if you decide to use it on this meatloaf or you can just use a store-bought one, one of your favorite ones. Now, I have a lot of veggies to prep and get ready, so as soon as I am done getting everything prepped and ready to go, we will go for the ingredients. The ingredients you're gonna need for this recipe is some 80-20 ground beef, some bacon, and you wanna make sure that your bacon is just the regular cut bacon. You don't wanna use the thick stuff for this recipe. Some breakfast sausage, some of those seasoned breadcrumbs, the stuffing breadcrumbs that I was talking about earlier. I have some minced garlic, red and green bell pepper, some yellow onion that I've diced up really small, which is really important. You don't wanna have huge chunks of the peppers um, in your meatloaf. You want to have them kind of evenly distributed all throughout the meatloaf. And for the seasonings, I have some ground sage, salt, granulated garlic, some pepper. Um, you may also see in your grocery store that it says rub sage. Either one will work for this recipe. Some vegetable oil as well as some large eggs. The first thing you want to do to get started when making this meatloaf is you want to get your veggies sauteed down. So I'm going to take my vegetable oil, garlic, and the vegetables to the back to saute them. I'm, I'm going to really cook them down, give them a chance to get nice and sort of caramelized. I don't like them to be really rough inside the meatloaf or have too much of a bite. I like them to be nice and tender and sort of caramelized. If you want yours to have more of a bit of uh, more of a bite to them, then you'll cook them less time than I do. But anyhow, you'll see it as it starts to come together and you'll see why I dice them really small and why I really cook them down when it's all done. But I'm gonna get this stuff headed towards the back so I can get started cooking. 
To my pan that has been preheating over a medium high heat, I'm gonna add in my oil along with my veggies. Give them a quick stir. Now I'm going to allow the veggies to cook down, stirring them occasionally until they start to get nice and caramelized. I'll show you what they look like when they get to that stage. These look great. You can see that the peppers have really cooked down and this is what I meant by caramelized down. So now I'm going to, now that the veggies are, the peppers and the onion are done, I'm going to add in my garlic, stir it in and allow it to cook for about a minute just to take off some of that raw garlic flavor but you want to make sure you keep stirring during this stage because you don't want your garlic to burn okay that is perfect i'm going to turn the heat off and i'm going to transfer all of these veggies into a bowl allow them to cool slightly before i continue with the rest of the meatloaf my veggies have had a chance to cool slightly now i get to have some fun and get my hands a little dirty so I'm just gonna squeeze this pork into my bowl with my ground beef. Okay, now I'm gonna add in my seasonings, just sprinkle them all over, along with my veggies that I cooked up and you can see how much they've cooked down. It ends up, you start out with three cups because it's one cup of each and then you end up with practically one cup once they've had a chance to cook down. But that's how I like it. Now, like I said, if you want your veggies to have a bit more of a bite to them, then just cook them for less time. And my eggs that I have placed into this bowl and lightly beaten. Now I'm gonna get my hands dirty and start mixing all of these together. Now it's really important to break apart this pork meat in with the rest of the meat. Just mash at it. Okay, that looks perfect. Everything has been mixed together well. Now I'm gonna start adding in my breadcrumbs. Get them mixed in, but just until combined. Okay, that looks great. It's come together nicely. Now you may feel like it's a lot of breadcrumbs for this meatloaf, but I want you to keep something in mind. You have the fat not only from the ground beef and the pork, but also from the bacon, rendering off as it's cooking. And what those breadcrumbs do is they help to absorb that fat, keeping that meatloaf nice and juicy for you. So that is why I use as many breadcrumbs as I do. And as you can see, it didn't, it's not taking over the meatloaf. <laughs> it's just gonna help blend everything together more nicely as well. So before I get started patting it together, I'm gonna get my hands cleaned up and we'll move on. I got my pan all ready to go. What I did is lined it with foil to help me when it's time to clean. And I have a rack here as well, which the meatloaf is gonna be sitting on the rack. And that way the, the oils have a chance or the fat has a chance to render off and I will be draining it after the first set of cooking time, but you'll see here in a bit. Now I am going to remove the rack and start patting the meatloaf together on the foil part of the, of the pan. Now I'm just gonna pat this meatloaf into a two inch thick rectangle shape. Okay, that looks great. Now I'm gonna take a piece of bacon and one thing I like to do is sort of stretch my bacon. And if you're questioning why I said not to use thick cut bacon, it's because I've noticed when I use the thick cut bacon that it doesn't, um, it doesn't get as crisp as this thin cut bacon does. So this first one, when you stretch it out, it should be able to cover the whole two inch side. Then I'll get another piece. And this is what the side looks like. So just sort of stretch it out over, and then you're gonna tuck the remaining underneath. All right, let me show you with one more piece. Again, 
just stretch it apart some. Make sure that they touch, tuck underneath. Now I'm gonna finish wrapping the rest of the bacon around the meatloaf and I will show you what it looks like when it's done. Very quickly, like with the other side, you wanna make sure that you wrap the edge up before you flap over the other pieces. Now for my last piece, I'm just gonna spread these out a little more. That way I only need one more here. And there you have it, a perfectly wrapped meatloaf. Now I'm gonna transfer this over onto my baking rack. And everything should stay together nicely for you, as you can see there. You can't pat it on the baking rack. It'll just go through all the little holes. Now I'm gonna move it back to the pan. Now I'm gonna place this beautiful meatloaf into my oven that has been preheating at 400 degrees and get ready to have that good smoky bacon meatloaf smell going through my house. And I will show you what it looks like when it's done. My meatloaf has been in the oven now for 45 minutes. You can see that the bacon has had a chance to get nice and crisp on the meatloaf. The meatloaf is pretty much done at this stage. All I'm gonna do now is coat it and some of my tangy barbecue sauce. And it's at this stage, if you have a lot of fat drippings in the skill, in the pan, that you'll wanna drain some of them off, but I don't have too many, so I'm gonna just go ahead and leave them in there. Get this coated nicely. Now I've coated all around this meatloaf very heavily in this barbecue sauce. I'm, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it back into the oven for just five minutes, allow that barbecue sauce a chance to stick to the meatloaf, and I will show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, the meatloaf is now ready for its final coating of sauce, and take a look at it. <laughs> it smells so good. Okay, so, and I'm gonna do that while it's still on the wrap before I transfer it over to my platter. But again, I'm gonna coat it very generously in the sauce. Just getting the rest of the sauce out, making sure it is slathered all over the meatloaf. Now, before I cut into it and show you what the inside looks like, I'm gonna allow it to sit and rest for a while. If I were to cut into it right now, the juices would come out and we want to give it a chance to just sit and allow those juices to just redistribute back into the meatloaf and I will cut it for you here in just a few minutes. Just patience. And I'm saying patience more so for me than for you because I'm the one smelling it and ready to eat. So I will show you it as soon as I get back. Now this beautiful meatloaf has been resting for about 10 minutes. And as it was sitting and resting, I was thinking, you probably don't care to see a close-up of the inside. So, I know you want to. You want to see the inside because I want you to see the inside. So, I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer so I can cut into this for you. Okay, now I'm going to cut into this for you so you can see the inside. Got to cut through this bacon that's gotten nice and crisp on the outside okay now I'm holding it with my hand for a reason but I want you to see let me see if I can get you to get a good shot of that the inside of it and this is why I'm holding it with my hands you can see that bacon is just wrapped around the meatloaf so you got bacon in every single bite Got a good size bite there with some bacon on it. Mm, 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 mm. Man, you got so much going on here. You got the peppers, the onion, the garlic. You got that delicious sage, that pork sausage. And then 
that delicious tangy barbecue sauce on the outside. Make sure if you're not gonna make this barbecue sauce that you buy one that's got some sweet flavor to it. It complements well with the meatloaf because it's salty and then sweet. Mm -mm -mm. Man, and you know meatloaf is one of those dishes that is even better the next day. My kids like to eat it as meatloaf sandwiches. And I always reserve some of the barbecue sauce to put over the top when I'm serving it. Mmm. So, so good. You gotta give this recipe a, tr a try. Anyhow, I thank you for spending time with me here today. Don't forget to like and subscribe below. And I hope to see you again next time.